Step number two. <laughs> uh. Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all things die graphs. Now, about a month or two ago, I uploaded this video right here, how to teach CVC words. And in that video, I kind of walked out a little layout of some example lessons and activities I would do when teaching a small group CVC lesson. So a small group phonics lesson. And many of the comments and emails I got were wondering how you might switch it up if it was going to be a whole group lesson. So I picked a different skill, die graphs. I know the first graders at my son's school are, I think, finishing up die graphs right now, but they've been focusing on die graphs. So I wanted to show you how I might do a whole group phonics lesson to teach and really refocus on that skill of die graphs. So in this video, I will have five different steps to kind of go along with teaching die graphs in the way that I would normally do it. But remember, even if you aren't teaching die graphs, you can use these same exact types of lessons with whatever skill you are teaching in your classroom. And I also have a fun freebie for you. If you have watched my videos before, then welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I'm a former K through two literacy and first grade teacher who now makes a bunch of educational videos here on YouTube. But in all seriousness, I love doing this. I make these videos short and actionable for you to go back and hopefully use and take some of these ideas in your classroom right away. It's been a really fun side job for me as I have been getting my master's in curriculum instruction and I've been part-time subbing at a local school here in my neighborhood as well. All right, if you're ready to get started, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's go. All right, step number one is to start with the sound. Now, whenever you are introducing or reviewing a phonics skill, I really like to have students make sure they are focusing on that phonemic awareness and that sound that they hear first before we kind of jumble it up and throw in the graphemes or the letters. We want them to really listen for the sound and then we can represent it with letters. There are many different ways you can do this, but there is a fun teaching strategy called concept attainment that you can definitely use when teaching a phonemic awareness activity and I shared about it on Instagram it looks like this right here the idea behind concept attainment is that you are going to show students examples and non examples of whatever skill you're trying to teach them but you don't explicitly teach them the skill first so here you can see we have a thumbs up and they're trying to find out what things are in the thumbs up why is that all alike and how does it differ from the thumbs down? So here we have chair, chicken, cherry, cheese, peach, and bench. And if you looked at the title of this video, you would know these are all digraphs. And in fact, this is the specific digraph, ch, ch. And then you can see here on the thumbs down side, we have hat, sad, tree, ship, and fish. So the goal of this type of intro activity is to really get students thinking about the sounds in the words and what sounds they might hear on that yes side that they don't hear on the no side. Your students will likely recognize that they hear ch, ch. Whether or not they know it's ch yet, they will recognize that they hear that sound in every single word on the thumbs up side. It's just a really fun way to put students in the driver's seat and instead of, you know, the same old, this is what we're going to learn today, this lets them think about those sounds and all those images first and they kind of have to discover the skill of the day. Quick side note, you can teach so many different concepts with concept attainment. Basically, you just have to show them a bunch of yes examples and a bunch of no examples and they have to figure out what the rule or what the skill is. So for a quick example, I'm thinking geometry. You could throw up a bunch of images of things that have four corners and then on the no side would be things that have zero corners or three corners or anything but the four of them and students would have to kind of figure out how they're alike. If you have other ideas for using this teaching strategy, drop them in the comments below. We can get a nice list generated. Step number two would be to explicitly teach that skill. So in this example, CH. Now I like to do this with some sort of anchor chart. If you use foundations, they use this card right here, CH, chin, ch. 
If you don't use foundations, you can use any sort of card like that, but you really want to highlight the grapheme, the sound or the phoneme that those graphemes make, and you want a focus image as well. On to step number three. So first we started with that sound and we did it with that fun kind of yes or no, what's the rule activity. And then we explicitly taught the skill. So now we want our students to practice decoding some words. And again, this is something I would be doing a whole group. Um, I'm brainstorming a lesson that I would do with the entire class. So we talked about it. I explicitly confirmed that yes, CH is what we're working on. Now let's try to read some words with CH in them. When you're introducing a new skill and you want students to decode these words, remember not to make them too tricky. You don't want them to be decoding words that have a bunch of other patterns that they haven't learned yet. For example, chain. Maybe they don't know that AI makes long A sound yet. So we might not want to have them decode chain or cheeseburger, something like that. So you really want to try to find some simple words to decode first that probably have some short vowels in them. Here are some examples of words you might want to use with them. Chip, chat, bench, chick, chin, chop, and lunch. And honestly, if you're doing this whole group, I actually wouldn't do all seven of those. I'd probably pick about three and really practice decoding with that ch sound in it. And two quick notes about these words that I'm having students decode. First, I made sure that CH was at the beginning and at the end of some of these words like lunch and bench because students need to know that they don't always just show up at the beginning of words. And secondly, when you are decoding words like this, I will usually have students do this, especially whole group, I will use successive blending. And I talk about it in this decoding strategies video here, but essentially um, successive blending is when, like here's an example, chip, First, I would have students recognize this CH here, and we would all say CH together. And then instead of them doing CH, I, P, and blending all three sounds together, I would have them start by just blending CH, I, the CH and the I. And then when they have CH, they just add that P onto the end, making CHIP. I love using successive blending and especially doing it whole group. I find that I reach the most learners by doing that. Okay, now we need to get students up off the rug, moving around and kind of practicing this either independently or with a partner. So again, first we started with that sound, then we explicitly taught the skill, then we made sure we actually went and decoded some words with that skill in it. Now is when I would like to do some sort of activity where students can really practice identifying if they hear that CH sound or not. And there are many different ways you can do this, but I decided to make a little freebie for you. And today I would do a read the room type of activity. Now I love using a read the room or a write the room type of activity because it gets students up, it gets them out of their seats, moving around, and they can still practice the skill. And I also like it because it can be used independently where students each have their own recording sheet or you could have students go around with a partner to practice this. Either way is totally fine, but this is how it works. First, you would have a bunch of cards like this one right here, and these are included in your freebie all for CH. And even if you already taught this with your class, you can still review using this activity. So definitely download these in the description below, but you would go ahead and cut out these picture and word cards and you would put them around the room. Now I want you to notice two things. First, I like to include some word cards that students are decoding or at least trying to decode. And I want to also include some image cards where students have to listen for that digraph and see if it has CH. The second thing I want you to notice is that not all of the cards are going to have CH in them because of that is the point of this game. Students will also have a recording sheet that looks like this one right here, and it has a bunch of numbered boxes with a thumbs up or a thumbs down in it. And the numbered boxes actually correlate with the number on the cards you're gonna tape around the room. So you can see here it has a number in the corner. So students are going to get their clipboard. I usually have to use a clipboard or a book, um, and they'll get their recording sheet, and then they will have to walk around the room, and I do this as a silent activity because it's nice and Otherwise it gets too loud and crazy. So I do this as a silent activity if it is independent. If it's with a partner, I will let them use their whisper voices, but they have to be very quiet. And their goal is to walk around the classroom and they're going to find each and every card and they have to determine does this word have ch 
or CH in it. If it does, they will color in the thumbs up, and if it does not, they will color in the thumbs down. Now, while students are walking around doing this type of activity, I would definitely be circulating and just checking in and seeing which students might need a little bit more help with this skill. And step number five is going to be some sort of independent extension activity. Now, especially if you're doing a read or write the room, you will have some students that finish earlier than others. So I definitely like to make sure they know what they're doing when that's done. So that way you don't have half the class up and half the class down. Now, for an extension type of activity, there are many different things you could do. I have a couple examples here. Here I have my one page decodables. I have shared about these a few times before, but you can quickly see that they have a review skill. So that would be, you know, CH is what we're working on, but they have some review sounds and letters. Then they go into decoding some CH words into CH sentences. They have to then encode some words that the teacher says. So you might have to give them some examples of this. Or for this exact example from today, you might have them write down two uh, CH images they found during that write the room or read the room. And then they also have a place here to show comprehension by drawing a picture of one of the sentences. Another great extension would be these phonics find it. Now these are brand new and updated to my store. You can see here that they have to actually decode five or six different words. This one all has, you know, CH in them. And they have to find those images inside the picture box. So this is great to see if they can actually decode the word and they know what it says. And then down at the bottom, they will choose one of the words and write a sentence. And lastly, one other type of extension you could have students do, especially if they did the read the room with a partner, would be to play a fun phonics game. Now, I have these ones right here. These were added to my SJT Literacy Club just last month, and these are called Read and Color. And here you can see students will just take turns going around the board, and this is a decoding game, so they are they need to roll, move their piece, and decode the word, and then find it in the grid. For that game, students would just go back and forth until the whole grid is colored in, and whoever colored in the most with their color crayon wins. I will go ahead and link the one-page decodables and the phonics find it sheets in the description down below in case you want to grab those. And I don't have that read and color decodable game in my store. I only have it in the SJT Literacy Club. But if you want me to make like, maybe I can compile a bunch of ones with different skills, different phonics skills, let me know down in the comments and I will see if I can make a small mini unit for those. So there you have five different steps I would take when teaching digraphs to my whole class. And remember, even if you are not teaching digraphs, I hope this gave you some ideas and kind of steps to take when teaching whatever skill you're teaching to your students. Don't forget to grab your Read the Room freebie. That will be linked down below. I'll write free next to it so you know that is that link. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video that I upload, which currently I am uploading on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.